Hello YouTube fans, Madarantz here, and welcome to some duels and replays with Metalphosis featuring Magispectors, and also featuring Garfu and Ariadne. Apex may also show up, but I've dropped it from the list as of now. And yeah, it's essentially just to show off the newest fusion monster, Full Metal, metal Foes, Alkahist, or whatever, however you pronounce that card, that pun on Full Metal Alchemist, like. <laughs> But essentially, I've, it's a bit hard to bring out than you would originally think, since the deck does run 12 normal monsters. The fact that you don't en generally end up with Metal Forces on the board, unless you've got 4 in hand to start with, or later on in the game, it's generally not as bring outable as you'd think. If you have 4 Metal Forces in hand, it's a little bit of a brick at that point, but with this new card, it kind of turns that brick into a nice defensive play, Similar to Unicorn, so that's quite nice. But I got a few replays, and I got a list at the end of this video, so I'll go through that at the end, and let's go on to the replays. So the first one is just an example of how good you can set up in this deck. So I start my Gothu, get the tokens on the board, Ariadne, get my search for a counter trap, which will be Strike. Yeah. Oh, no, he gives me warning instead. I go for my Belfast Fusion, Adamante. Go for Zolkin, set a strike, get Void Ogre, and destroy the token again, get counter, and then just pendulum summon out two defenses. So he just scoops there, he didn't have much to really go on because Dark Hole would be negated by Void Ogre, Despot 4 negated by Strike or Warning, depending on which one I would have thought to use. Maybe Warning because he knows that's coming. And I know Strike is good against a lot of the Despot effects. His top deck is a 1, so he would only have those two to set as back row. And my top deck combination, useless. I would have enough output to take a Ray from over 2000, because he probably used that on my Pendulum Summon after I destroyed a few cards. Counter would have gone off, I would have had a Vol Flame, that would have been over 6000. And he, would be, he was fine to scoop there, to be fair. Onto the other replays because the other ones are actually duels, and this was just a setup example. So, the first duel is against ABC, the newest meta deck that's taking the OCG by storm at the moment. It was, it was, re it's a really good deck actually. I have to play it to be fair. I will definitely have to play it. Maybe with Cockadoodaloo because you know that's getting teched everywhere. I don't have the best opening to be fair, I've got some back row, that's about it, which is a shame. He goes for his assault call, I have to negate that because if I don't, he will stack in plus like crazy. So I destroy my area and get my search, but I have no more counter traps since I've already got one on the board. Destroy my Vol Flame, that's something that would counter, get some more searching Ariadne's on the board, try and do some damage. Because I think that's the only win condition I have at the moment here. Because if he gets off, he can really screw me with ABC, Dragon Buster, and Samurai Infinity. So he transmogrifies into Galaxy Soldier, gets another one on, into his hand. Buster gets a search for Sea Wing. Now he has ABC access. He goes for Infinity. I strike it. And he summons ABC. He soul charges. Because he misplays, he didn't realize he can reborn the side dragon infinity. He had a lapse in judgment, but uh, it's just a bit of a shame. But he wouldn't have done too much damage to me at that point. I think I could have survived it. Only 3k damage. I go for a centric to bait him out. He tags into his two three monsters. But regardless, if he had discarded anything here, he wouldn't have minus well plus too much to be fair. I go for Alamante to get my fusion back into the deck. Then I can go for my search for Vortex, get my Metal Forces into the hand, go for my Ori Hulk, so I can do the amount of damage I need, to be fair. So there was a minor misplay or two in there, he could have banished off one of my monsters, I had an alternative win condition of Utopia the Lightning though, so I could have just tagged into that and did 3000 damage. But this still came out at a similar pace. I got a Unicorn in hand, hand, which wasn't really that good against ABC. ABC is a very powerful monster, to be fair. They made it a little bit too powerful, to, from my point of view, to be fair. But hey, it's, it's something we're going to have to deal with in the future. On to the next one. Next, against um, Dark Magicians. Dark Magicians are uh, slightly gaining a little bit of pace in the OCG, only mildly though. I think you can mix it with Demise quite effectively with the newest uh, Dark Magic Veil, but that's about it. It's not going to be a meta deck. 
this is when I was actually running Apex at the at that point. I probably will side Apex later on for when Unicorns or Mayu, not Mayu, Gofu is um, pretty redundant in that matchup. So I can put in Apex and have something more stronger, like Sand Dragon Ability for Pendulums. But um, essentially, I tried to Pendulum Summon. I didn't know if he had Strike or not, so I didn't want to summon that Apex just in case. Go for Fusion, summon Alkahest. One of the only duels where I actually get Alkahest, and when I shuffle back my fusion, I get my unicorn, so I can just normal summon on that. He dead draws and uh, navigates through his circle, maybe? I think he did activate circle then. Getting navigate, and his top deck was going to be dedication, which means he didn't have his damn magician. If he ha hadn't been solemned, he would have had his damn magician through the effect of illusion magic, but unfortunately, I solemned, and I'm not going to let him get that plus. I'll guess not doing much in this, unfortunately. On to the next one. And the next duel is against, um, I believe it's Phantom Knights that tries to modify into heroes. Because he starts with Marauding Captain and gets some search with the hero, with his uh, Phantom Knights. And sets up with Downside, that's about it. I'm pretty sure it is because I remember trying to modify was top deck, was his final draw or something. Or find an option for his draw. He twin twisters me on my turn one, which is bad because this deck doesn't really like being twin twisted on the scales at least. So he kind of makes me break his quite badly. I was going to go for Alkahes here, but he has a solemn warning, which is even worse from my predicament because I just got full back for it. That's about it. He knows I've got strike, so he's playing around it, so he doesn't summon his Phantom Knights at this point and just goes for a little bit of. Um, options for next turn. So he sends his Fogblade to the graveyard. He mustn't have another option, I'm guessing. Maybe no other wings. I think wings already went. Maybe no sword at all. He draws a Terra Top, but he's already used Takenborg. He goes for Breaksword, I strike it. He uses Fogblade, and now he's in a position to go for another one. I solemn it. <laughs> Not getting that. Letting that happen. And he gets a Fogblade out of the deck and sends Ancient Cloak to the graveyard. About it, that's about it for him. I can finally unbrick now thanks to my combination, a very good card for this deck, a great searcher, and I'm able to pen someone in a defensive stance, because I don't know if I was able to if I was able to get around him and do enough damage to go for game. Which I was pretty sure I wasn't because Fog Blade was there, so I couldn't could only do about 4,400 damage. He goes for his terror top, he can't do anything with that. He goes for Levier, I bounce it back because I don't want him getting any options. He has Shadow Mist in the hand, which I didn't know of at the time. And his top deck is Transmodified, so he was going to Transmodify a Phantom Knight into Shadow Mist to get Dark Claw. Which I believe did top, I, I can't remember when, but it did top a while back. And a lot of people were like hyping Transmodify again, and hyping maybe Marauding Captain in high rarity. But that's about it. it. It didn't take off very commonly. I, I don't think it has topped commonly since. But it's a nice deck. But yeah, the magic specters are good. Magic specter is very good in pendulums. Very good indeed. On to the next duel. And the next duel is against one of those cancerous archetypes known as Cyphering. We all love Cyphering. So he reveals his Cyphering through Gamma, negating my go my Gothel, which is a shame because I wanted those tokens to put my cards on the board. But um, it gets negated, so I just have to put four flame in scale. So hopefully he doesn't get negated because he has monsters on the board, so he can't negate it while it's in scale. Which is great, so I don't have to fear Delta in that sense. I go for my combination, I'm pretty sure he doesn't have Epsilon on the deck. Go for my counter to get my monster on the board, put my scale up. He has a beta, unfortunately, and destroy my monster and some that as Zeta. Which is not good for me, not good at all. I'm on 6-5 life points and he brings me down to 4k. Setting another back row. I was 100% sure this was Drowning Mirafoss from the world go, so that's why I had to play around with essentially. He got, I use my combination, destroy the back row, summon out three defenses, and go for my Orihulk, trying to destroy this and destroy his circuit. But he banishes it, which is a shame due to that annoying Cypher Overload. He runs over my monster and Nothing else. Nothing else can happen here. I go for Voltrix Trooper, which is my consistency card in the deck, which is lovely because I get a draw and I get a Unicorn. Unicorn being brilliant for my deck. Unicorn bounces back his monster, he goes for his Zeta, I can strike it now, and 
he didn't get his monster thankfully, and he can't use his overload thankfully either. I attacked directly, surprised he didn't go for a drowning mirror force, go for Ori Hulk, destroy Ori Hulk to get my fusion on the board, Ori Hulk destroys the circuit, forcing his Zeta to add back Cyframe Circuit instead. But he instead goes for Beta because he top decks a annoying circuit again. <laughs> Go for my Bumbuku, search for another Bumbuku. I know I have a good enough defense against um, Cypherings in general through match inspectors because they can't be destroyed by card effect. He drowns me and I've still got my Unicorn on the board because I need to keep one in defense or I will lose the duel. And he top decks Pod Duality, going for another Pod Duality. He didn't go for the Delta mainly because I don't play any spells. Well, I revealed many spells other than my scales, and rather than Warlords, he doesn't know if his that's going to be too effective against me at the moment, since he, I've already revealed a lot of spellcasters. He goes for the second drowning, confirming my suspicions, and he goes for Kaka D. This card is very good against Kaka D, because you can stop it before he gets it. He goes Kaka D, I bounce his, my monsters back, and he has Maxi in hand through Bar Duality. Not going to do him too much here. Pendulum summon out my Unicorn and Volflame. Flame, try to attack, Beta comes back on the board, Unicorn is protected from being destroyed, and he uses Overload, and I can bounce back my monster before Overload can really screw me over. So he has 1900 life points left, he's in a really tough position, he gets his rivalry, summons his Kakadi, about to back, he now drops to Maxi, thankfully, <laughs> go for Vortex Trooper, try and shuffle things back. And he goes to the way around anyway, I shuffle back, get Apex Avion, and just attack again. Because there's no point in giving him another card. Another card would have been an overload, so he would have been dead anyway. And you can't overload Unicorn, which is absolutely brilliant. That's why Magic Spectres are great against Cyphering. And thankfully I had them in the deck. If I didn't have them in the deck, I probably would have lost that duel. And on to the final replay. And the final replay is against Demise Tunes. I believe this was one of my subs that randomly requested a duel. I think so, yeah. Anime, yeah, that was it. So he gets his card Demise, he's got a card Veil in hand now. He sets two and discards a tomb, Dark Magician. I get my painful decision, get my cards to the hand. Bumbuku gets uh, tries to get a search, but he strikes it. Thankfully not destroyed. Go for Ariadne, Gold Driver. He flips his vanities, which is annoying as hell. And destroy Ariadne, get search, and they get a strike. And two of a back row. He top decks something and goes for two table of contents to shut down his vanity sentence and reveals the veil again, summoning the Dark Magician from the graveyard. This is why you can play to Demise Dark Magicians, because of that support card. His Necroface runs my monster over, but he can't attack the turn, he summons Dark Magician. I flip combination, unbrick my hand, although it's already unbricked here, it doesn't really need it. So I go for my vault, go for my um, steel run. And he goes for a strike, which is not good for me. I get another strike on my board, and a fusion as a back row as well. Nothing too, nothing too powerful. He sets another back row, which I was worried there was going to be another strike. So I now summon Steel Ren, fusion summon Ori Hulk, and get my Volflame out through my combination. Destroy combination to set the fusion. Combination searches again. Pendulum summon out two, three monsters actually, Apex as well, I attack and try to do as much damage as I can, forgetting that he can attack directly with two monsters, but thankfully he doesn't have much, because he, I would easily negate Comic Hand, so he's no point in activating at this point. So I fusion summon, or summon Ori Hulk again, destroy the Tomb Kingdom, shuffle back my monster, and summon Night Unicorn, bouncing back his Tomb Down Magician, and now I can attack the game with my Apex Avion. Which was a really nice duel, because you never usually get good duels against two decks. But with Demise, you can play it quite effectively against meta decks, which was lovely. It's a shame he just top decked another Veil at that point. His next card being a Bomb's Trapple, probably for Revelsia. Not for Revelsia, probably just a random Bomb's Trapple then. And my next card was going to be another Kieran, which really doesn't matter. So, onto the deck. And onto the deck. So this is my version 2 of the deck. I've played this deck before, but I wanted to tweak it more because we're getting to the time where we're going to be playing this in the TCG in about a month's time, and I wanted to have some more practice with the deck. Plus, we got the new Alka Hest, which unfortunately didn't show up many times in the replays, but I generally didn't make him. I generally never needed that option unless I had four Metal Forces in hand, which comes up in testing quite a few times, but... 
just nothing to a viable extent I could show. So let's go into the deck. We have triple ball plane, triple gold driver, triple silver, and triple steel run. All of the metal forces are currently currently in the game at the moment. Hopefully we get another monster for the deck. Maybe another scale. It would be nice, but I doubt it at this point present moment in time, maybe another spell trap to increase consistency, we don't know, we we don't know at this point, but they're still going to be continued for me, since the Dracus layers are going to be continued in Invasion of Chaos. But these are just have the generic effect to destroy a phase of card you control to set a Metal Forces card from your deck. The main problem I've had with this deck is that I draw these targets. We were very, very annoying, drawing a target with a target for Ariadne, always going to be an annoying thing, but... If you don't and you draw a hand of Metalphosis, that's still good. You may not have your control aspects that you have in the deck, but you're going to have an Alkahes on the board, so that's a good defense. That's a great support card. We have Triple Unicorn and Triple Bumbuku. Bumbuku can search out Scale 2 at will, which is great for when you draw too many Scale 8s. And Unicorn is one of the best cards that a Pendulum deck can run because it's Pallades and it can't attack the destroy my card effect. So it's an even stronger Pallades at that matter. So definitely very good in this deck. Always going to be a free off, free off engine every time I will play Metal Forces. In the sense that's not hybrid with another deck. And we have two Guiding Ariadne. Um, originally it was free, but Guiding sometimes breaks. I don't always need to see it turn one, so I am fine with having only two of them. Try to keep the power in the deck while not uh, clogging it too much with things that are going to be useless later on the turn or if I draw too many of them, going to break my hand. Triple Eccentric Archfiend to go with the Unicorn, still a great scale 8. I've got a lot of sc lower scales, potentially, it's basically 6 to 6, plus 3 on this and plus 3 on this and plus 2, so I've got more low scales and high scales. So, Eccentric Archfiend needs to be at 3 at this point, it can add the Monarch, the main field spell, it can add the Storm Strikes, good against the Mize, essentially, and scale 7, so it can pen someone out the Unicorn. I dropped Apex Avion for this reason, because I can't submit Outward and Eccentric Archfiend, so it was more bricky than anything. Although it's a brilliant card, I would probably sign in, but um, apart from that, I don't think it's going to be too effective in the coming months. And then two Gothu. Originally it was going to be free of again, but I didn't need to make it turn one all the time. And it could contribute to bricks as you usually have monsters later on after turn one. So don't want to have it too many of them in the deck. Then we have Triple Vortex Trooper. This is the main new thing on the deck that I have at the moment. And it's, it's kind of a double edged sword. Essentially, you can unbrick your hand and get the scale you need by shuffling back um, dead control cards because your hand is a little bit bricky at that point, or you can shuffle them back and still not get anything, which is always a pain in the ass. But that hasn't happened too much in testing. More likely, I get enough for my scale and I've got some kind of control. Even one part of my control is better than no control at all. So Vortex Trooper has been proving to be good. If I had it too, I feel that I wouldn't draw into it consistently enough for it to unbreak my hand. So it's basically just an unbreak, which is very, very nice indeed. And you can destroy it to draw a card, so good in that sense. I've got some of that to search out Vault Flame at will, because sometimes I may not have my scale 8. want to give that extra consistency. You could have enough Slack Goblin instead of this card in the deck, but I just thought some of that might be better. Then one Metal Versus Fusion. Originally, in my last build, I had two of these fusions, but I'm only going to be running one, mainly because I'm not running Pot of Cupidity at the moment. And you're going to be you're going to be hard pressed to find someone good banishing your fusion. Although it's going to be happening a little bit more with ABC. It's going to be it depends on what ABC, how strong ABC is going to be in the TCG at that point. If it does prove to be a lot heavier than I would originally think then I will probably put in Pot Cupidity and a secondary fusion to keep this consistency up in the deck without um, having too many of these fusions coming into my hand. And then we have Triple Painful Decision to search out any of the lower Metal Versus monsters, which is a very good card for this deck. Then we have the Solemn Engine of one Solemn Warning and Triple Strike. 
as a nice defense, search through Ariadne, hope to not draw them turn one. If I do, Vortex Trooper can just shuffle them back into the deck. Same for the Metals versus Spells and Traps. Combination is a definite two of in this deck because it unbricks your hand if you only have one Metal versus Scale and something to destroy, most likely Ariadne. So you can destroy that, set the combination next turn. If your scale is still there, you can destroy it, get the other part scale, and unbrick. Your pseudo monkey board, it just takes a turn. Which is a bit of a shame, but it's a quite nice card. And it has a few, has the effect when you fusion summon, you can reroll a metal thosis from your graveyard. Yeah, as long as it's lower level than the fusion monster. Which doesn't work with Alkahes, but it works with Oriol to summon out Vault Flame. Which can be nice, or the monster you sent through painful. Painful um, decision. I was gonna say a choice end. And then one counter as a way of recovery, but also especially something out monster from the deck. I don't think it needs to be maximized counter. Maybe a secondary one could be alright. But it's more players' preference on which metal poses, spells, and traps, and what quality you use in the deck. On to the extra, we have one break star, but when I have a Moku and a Centric on the board, I want to go for something annoying. It can destroy my fusion to get a draw, destroy counter or combination to do whatever I need at that point. Abyss Dweller for the annoying VA, Monarchs, all that kind of shenanigans. Abyss Dweller screws, over, screws them over. Then Castell to shuffle back things, although I don't really need it in the deck. I don't think I've actually summoned Castell. Might drop it. Then we have one Utopia and one Utopia the Lightning, although not accessi accessible for the UK TCG. It's still a really good card. I still wait more testing with this card since I haven't used it commonly. It's good against Cosmo. Very good against Cosmo. Then one Utopia Beyond. I came into the point when I need to get over Chaos Max, but only had Unicorns. This can be my out to that, make it zero, run it over. And I think that's the only real out, except from Utopia the Lightning, I have against Chaos Max. Very annoying card for this deck, except from Crystal Wing, but you don't make that consistently. Then onto the Zolkin targets, we have Ultimate Zolkin himself, to fuse with Adamante and Garful, well, Sync. Then Crystal Wing, Ignister, and Moonlight as three of the main summonable monsters, and then we have Void Ogre Dragon. Both Ignista and Void Ogre Dragon can actually norm be normally synchro summoned into with Gofu and most likely Bumbuku or Centric Archfiend, which I think is great for this deck. So I don't need to go for Zolkin to get Void Ogre out. I've got Alternatives, so I don't have to go all the way around the all the way around the hill to get the Zolkin out when I've got Void Ogre quite simply. Then we have the fusions, we have two Aura Hulk as our double piercer and destruction. Adamanti as our Zulkin target, we don't run Cardinal because it's only good at super polarizations in the game. And then one of the new responses, the full Metal Foes Alkahist. Alkahist is like a pseudo unicorn. It targets an equip an effect monster during your opponent's turn and equips it and gains a defense equal to that original attack. Which is a really weird effect, it's quite niche. You don't see that commonly equipping during your opponent's turn. And that can be Quite nice, actually. It can bait out Cosmos, it can um, steal strong monsters that you're going to do things with. Essentially, if you have like a Shadow Mist on the board, they try to go for Mass Change, you can absorb it, unless they try to attack, when that being the right decision. It can work with Unicorn, if they try, if I try to bounce back something with Unicorn to lure it out, then they try to use something to get rid of the old mon their monster, but not its cost. I'll guess they can equip that monster, and you've got around them, essentially. Which could be very nice in tandem with Unicorn, but pretty good with Apex instead. Apex being very long to partner with Alcaz, just I don't want to cut my consistency to run it. It also has a secondary effect to use that monster as a fusion material, but you're generally not going to use that for a fusion material. Who wants to summon out Adamante or Cardinal? Then we have Apexes as a side deck option. Probably take put these in to take out some unicorns in a matchup where they are more prominent. Probably a gift like a Demise variant might be more effective. Probably take out the Ariadnes for this, with all the rest of the back row hate to take out the Solemns, because you're generally not going to need them unless it's Cosmo Demise. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this uh, deck profile. I'm sorry the replays aren't as good as I would have wanted them to be. I've been trying to get some all week, and I just couldn't get many good ones. But the ones I got were, good, were decent enough. 
So yeah, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and join us if you want to see better content. Please leave a comment below and suggestions for the deck and for my channel in general. If you want to see when I'm streaming, the link will be in the Facebook page, which is in the description below. I probably will be streaming with this deck on Thursday, so look out for that. And yeah, thank you for watching. Matt Durant, signing out.